Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Envision Coworking, where you'll enjoy a beautiful space and community of, of creative and very, very supportive people. Our speaker this evening is Earl Formata. Earl can move mountains in marketing. He's a one-man marketing army, famous for having sold over $70 million worth of products and services, both on and offline. Earl is one of the most sought after digital marketing and sales consultants in Vancouver. Vancouver Business Network members and most welcome guests, I invite you now to put your hands together and give the one and only, the amazing Earl Formata, the VBN welcome that he deserves. Thank you, welcome. Thank you, sir. Take it away. Hi, everybody. All right, for those of you who know me, my name is Earl. For those of you who don't know me, my name is still Earl. And so what we're gonna be talking about today is building a startup versus buying a franchise and how to get the best of both worlds. So it's fun because I've, I've done both, had fun doing both, like both for different reasons. And uh, it was great because prior to starting this talk, you guys had that little circle where we talked about, do you want startup or do you want franchise? And I think by my count, more people were interested in startup than franchise in the room. But uh, it's still interesting to see both sides of the coin. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be a little more interactive. I was, I was, uh, I was going to ask you guys a bunch of questions back and forth. So feel free to put your hand up. And then what I'll do is I'll repeat the question because then the microphone will pick it up. And then I'll answer your question for you guys. So feel free to ask questions whenever you want. Shoot your hand up and I will, I will call on you. All right? All right. So people are looking for an opportunity. The 40-40-40 plan is failing. For those of you who don't know the 40-40-40 plan, you work 40 hours a week for 40 years of a life. And then by the time you're done, they give you a $40 gold watch and then you have to retire. Right? And that doesn't work anymore. People aren't staying at their jobs as long as they used to. People aren't doing the same thing as long as they used to. In fact, it's actually working to your detriment. Right? If you stay at a company for too long, what happens is that the valuation of you goes down and the, the prospects of you getting to the next, that next job actually gets harder. Right? So these things are changing. And so people are looking for opportunities. People are looking for other ways to spend their time. So what's their plan B to make more money? And those opportunities, typically what I've seen people make the decision between should I go you know, start a franchise and build my own business? Right? Or should I start from absolute scratch and build something from, from ground zero? Right? And what I wanted to do was kind of compare and contrast those two things and then just share some crazy cockamamie ideas I have about how to get the best out of both worlds. And so what we'll do is we'll start off with the startup. Okay? I found a messy startup picture because that's what startups are. They're messy right? <laughs> in general. Okay? The difference between the startup versus the franchise is the startup, you have more control. Right? When you start a franchise, they tell you what to do, how to do it, when to open, when to close, how to set it up, what color it should be. Right? With the startup, the, the, the alternative is that you have absolute control over everything. Okay? That's a good thing and a bad thing. Okay? Uh, I used to, actually, uh, so we're in Envision Coworking now, I used to manage a couple different coworking spots. And I saw an engineer, brilliant, brilliant human being, stress over what their logo should look like for seven days and then then spend another seven days figuring out the business card these guys could have been making money hit the ground rolling but no he's sitting there checking out you know I, I need to make my business card perfect and you don't have to right so sometimes with more control they're they're stuck with more decisions okay anyone ever see people anyone here ever people watch yeah all the time good 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 go watch people buy stuff in a grocery store it's actually fascinating Watch people buy ketchup. When they buy ketchup, there's only two options, Heinz and like not Heinz, right? And that, that's really all, oh, Frenches and not Frenches. And that, that's really it. They, you see them, they buy the ketchup and they leave. Watch the same person try to buy mustard. It's kind of hilarious. There's this, there's spicy mustard, there's grapes upon, there's the ones with the seeds, there's ones without the seeds. There's the, and watch someone try to buy mustard for someone else. It's kind of, you're, you're watching them and they're saying, ah, right? And there's 34 different options. And they don't know which one to pick, right? That's what happens to people sometimes when they do the startup because they, they get analysis paralysis and they have so many options, they have no options, right? So that's, that's one of the pitfalls of, of the startup side. There's more control, there's more risk, okay? There's more opportunity, I believe, on the startup side. So someone here specifically said, 
that the startup will have more valuation over time, right? If I start up, for example, a franchise, let's, let's start up a sandwich shop, let's start up a subway, and I grow that subway to the best subway it can be, and in 10 years I sell it, right? Versus if I take a startup and I grow that startup to be the best startup that it can be, and then I sell that, typically what you're gonna end up seeing if you're, if you're successful is that the startup is gonna be generally worth more. The multiplier on the startup is usually worth more than the multiplier on a, on a previous existing business as a franchise. The next thing is that, um, actually the next speaker, Patrick, was talking about earning his name, right, versus leveraging a brand. He used to work for TELUS, and people who are in the lower mainland, everyone knows TELUS, half of us use it, right? Whereas if you start over from absolute scratch, from absolute zero, you have to re-earn your name from ground zero, okay? So there's pros and cons to the side of a startup. Now, uh, by raise of hands, and I'll, I'll just kind of just uh, reiterate, who here liked the startup more than the franchise side? I forget. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay, cool. And then who you like the franchise side better? I forget. Okay, cool. A couple of people like the franchise side? Oh, franchise soar, yeah, that's, that's different. Then you, then, then you are the, then that is a startup, <laughs> pretty much. Right? Then we talk about buying into a franchise. And it's, it's a little more systemized. Right? There's a higher capital requirement to enter a franchise. Right? Most people can start their startup in their basement or in their co-working spot for pennies on the dollar. Whereas to get into a franchise, what's the average to buy into McDonald's these days? Does anyone know? Quarter of a million? Correct. We're talking about a million to two million, depending on the location, because you're also getting that land, right? So you're getting that space. So you know, you don't. It doesn't take two million dollars to start a startup, but yet it takes two million dollars to sell burgers and French fries, right? So the, the higher capital requirement on the franchise side, um, it also keeps out the riffraff, right? The problem is that you know, uh, people uh, when they when they're building these systems, they're they're looking for that proven system. Okay, anyone here seen the founder? Yeah, so one of my favorite scenes from that movie was them practicing in the parking lot. So for those of you who are watching online, you can't see it right now, but there's actually lines around me that tells me the box I'm allowed to stand in before I fall off the, com uh, before I fall off the camera, right? Now, when they were doing this in the, in the, in the movie, they actually had lines on the, the, the ground where they drew with chalk, where they would set up the burger station such that it would be able to build a better burger faster and quicker and more efficiently, right? And that's what you're getting with this with this proven system with the franchise school, right? Versus versus when you're when you're running a startup, everything you're doing is shooting from the hip. How do we do this? What's the manual? There is no manual. You make the manual, right? That's the differentiation between franchise versus startup. And again, building the brand from scratch versus leveraging a brand. Okay, everyone knows the golden arches, right? You see those things, you go French fries, and you go, yep, yeah, let's do this. Everyone knows that, but if you were to build your own thing from absolute zero, you then have to get that recognition and earn that recognition step. Okay. So those are the two big sides. So which one? It honestly depends. It depends on your, your risk you know, assessment of yourself. Right? Do you want something that you know you're going to put your money into and it has an 80% win ratio, whatever, and when you put the money in, as long as you follow the system and color by the numbers, right? That's all going to work wonderfully for you if, you if you follow through with it and have the wherewithal and the discipline to actually execute and pull that together, right? Whereas um, the, the, the startup side is like, here's a blank piece of paper, have at her, right? You get to pick the lines, you get to pick the colors, you get to pick everything, but everything, success and failure ends up being your fault, right? So moving, so how, what if we can get the best of both worlds? So um, in the startup space, people want to, you know, buy into the, the fancy new exciting technology, right? That, that's, that's how come they want to get into that. It, it's, it's exciting. The valuation is higher. There's more, there's more freedom. There's more ability to, to make your own choices, make your own decisions. On the other side though, the franchise has a franchise-like systems and strengths. There is something to be said about stuff that actually has been battle tested and worn and true and tried out, right? Versus, hey, I have an idea. Right? And then just kind of swinging it from there. So what if we can get the best of both worlds? And what I thought about that was we started putting together just this, this interesting group. And what the group was, was a, a partnership of people who have done it all before. 
and this is the concept I wanted to throw by you guys. And you can feel free to utilize and, 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 and use this concept on your own, come play with us, come play with other people doing the same kind of thing. But what we've done is why don't we find the experts who have done all this stuff before, band them together, stick them in the room, and then build from there. So this billionaire actually came in uh, to speak one day, and I, 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 I can go watch him. And the lesson he taught me at that event was instead of trying to acquire your first million dollars from absolute scratch and doing it organically, what if you were just to buy your first million dollars? It's much easier to raise the money then. It's much easier to convince people to come, to come with you. You've already got a million dollars of cash flow. Okay? And what I learned from that is what if you bought cash flow and then took that cash flow and grew it? Okay, so what I've identified is we've actually started to find companies where there is opportunity to buy into the company or to buy out the entire company in, into itself. And then we can have the best of both worlds. If you assemble a team that's done it before, what happens is that you've got that systemization and you've got that solidarity around that foundation, kind of like a franchise where you've got a good marketer, you've got a good technologist, you've got a good salesperson, you've got a good team, and you're putting that stuff together. But you still got the excitement of where you can grab some new technology, something exciting, something that's no, no, never been done before, and then take that to market. All right. So where do we start with this? We, we leverage the wisdom of the crowds. Okay. I, I don't proclaim to know everything, and that's one of the, the big things. Go back to the crowd. The trend is your friend. Okay. So when you're, when you're deciding um, where do you want to buy into, what do you want to, what do you want to do, the first thing you want to take a look at is there's this thing called Google Trends. Anyone here heard of Google Trends? Type in anything you want to Google Trends, it'll tell you if it's going up, down, or sideways. Okay? And the trend is your friend. So if you were to make a video game, let's say we want to make a startup together today. If you want to make a video game, what's trending now? You could ask, and you could find out the answer to that. Right? Use the data. Listen to the data is what, I'm, that was what the slide is really about. It's, it's, it's learn to see what's already out there. The data is there for you. Use that data and make it go. Okay. So I'll give you an example of this. Okay. So there's a company I, I, was, I was consulting with and they wanted to make games. And I asked them, well, why did you make the game that you made? And they just said, we like spiders. That's not a good enough reason to make the game. Well, what makes that game trend? Okay. Um, I was consulting for um, a couple different folks and they, they literally said, I have a half a million dollars We'd like you to, to make us a video game. We don't know which video game we're supposed to make next. What do you do? So guess what? I opened up my app store, found the first top 100 games, downloaded all of them, did some research. And then after playing video games for three hours, I came back and said, hey, you know what? This is what's trending. This is what's going on. This is what's happening. Right? And as, as, as crazy as it sounds, playing video games for three hours, I learned a bunch of information, which then helped me let them know which game they should be doing. This happened right around the time of Angry Birds. Anyone here play Angry Birds or have heard of Angry Birds or have seen Angry Birds? It's basically you stick a bird in a slingshot and you shoot pigs, right? And um, for the longest time, that model in the app store was the absolute best thing in the universe. People would pay a dollar to play a video game, play that game until they got bored, did it again, paid another dollar to play a video game. Okay. Now what's trending in the app store is completely different. It's all freemium games. All the games are free to download but they're based around something that is addictive. And then now that you're playing this game, if you want to have a better experience, if you pay $4.99 every month, this game will give you a bunch of diamonds and then you can not have to wait as long or get better armor or get better whatever, okay? And what happened was there was a shift. There was a shift from the 99 cent games to the freemium games where you could get all the good games for free. But if you wanted to beat that other guy, pay a little bit of money, pay a little bit of money, pay a little bit of money. And that's what got people hooked. Right? Lo and behold, I'm spending $300 on video games. Like, wait, what the hell just happened? Right? But it was only a dollar at a time. Okay? That's, that's where you get to listen to the data. So just pay attention to what's out there already. So if you guys want to go that route, learn from the crowds, just listen to what's out there. Taking advantage of environments. When going in and buying up other apps or other web services or other companies, there are, a, there's, a, there's a limitation to where people can take things to. Okay. 
Anyone ever here met uh, a, technician, uh, a technical person who had this wonderful idea of what to build and they just kept on building and building and building and they never understood the business side of the equation? Ever meet those people all the time? Yeah? Okay. There's lots of those guys. And they, 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 they are, they're adamant believers and if you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. If I build the best thing, everyone will hear about it and just show up. And that's not the case. Because they don't understand the business side of the coin. They don't understand the business aspect of that. Right? And then what happens? Well, then they fizzle out. They go, well, we ran out of interest because no one wants to buy this thing. Because they never bothered to ask, hey, what do you guys want? Right? Simple as that. Okay? Or the business guy who doesn't do tech. Okay? Anyone, everyone, anyone run into that guy? The business guy who, who, who's like, yeah, I got some ideas, but I have no idea how to build them. And it should be really easy, right? You guys just do this and it just works, right? <laughs> All the coders in the room just laugh, right? <laughs> so they're like, no, no, that's not how it works. It's like, I just want to move this one little thing over. No, that's going to break the relational database. And they're like, what's the relational database? And then they just go crazy. So the, th the thing is, like, people do this all the time. People don't understand the entire wholeness of what the operation is. So when, when you're looking at these things, um, people just don't get it. And then the, fun the funny thing is, after, after long enough time, they end up falling out of love with their business. Right? They fall out of love with their business. And this is where opportunity strikes. Okay. The idea was, instead of just thinking of making a startup from absolute scratch, or let's go color by number and have to follow all the rules, what if you did something in between? What if you found an opportunity by which you found the tech guy who didn't get the business, had a wonderful idea, had a wonderful concept, but then couldn't take it to market? What if you found the business guy who couldn't do tech, and you could find a tech team and back that up, get the idea rolling? and actually pull an execution on it. Right? There's lots of people who have lots of ideas, but then they can't execute on the darn idea, and the idea just sits there collecting dust. And this is what I'm proposing that people should do. Take a look at these opportunities. And we actually have giant lists of these opportunities on a regular basis. There's entire websites that just sell these things by the bushel. And you can buy them at wholesale prices all day long. Um, so businesses, uh, apps, websites, um, businesses that are already producing, making money, and then they're stuck. They're just stuck at whatever threshold they're at, and they've been doing it for too long, and they didn't join Venture Partner, they didn't do the LinkedIn circle thing, they didn't make friends, and now they want out. And they want to sell their business. Right? There are hundreds of thousands of these things on a, on a daily basis that just pop up, that you can just pick up. Okay, so you don't, so the point was, you don't have to start from absolute scratch. One of the folks who was up here before me um, had a problem starting, getting started with something, right? And some people don't like the blank slate. Some people don't like the, here's a white piece of paper, have at her, right? They don't like that. Whereas if you start sketching and start putting the drawing in, they go, then, now they see the vision, they, they, then they can put in the lines. Now they can start inking things. Now they can start adding color and making that all go, okay? Any questions so far? So what kind of price ranges are we talking about that this kind of uh, strike on? What kind of price ranges? So we, back to the franchise, we're talking a million bucks, right? Whereas these things, I have seen businesses that you could buy for $300. Because right? they're just sick of it. They're like, no, nope, get rid of it. Done. I'm, I'm, I, don't want, I don't want this thing anymore. I've been beating the drum for 10 years. Get me out. Some of the businesses that are selling for $300, I could turn into easily a $1,000 a month businesses, right? And I'll give you an example of that. So one example of that would be like a Chrome plugin, okay? A Chrome plugin. So Chrome is a web browser, and there's plugins that you install on Chrome that do things for you, okay? So there are Chrome plugins that are like really, really simple, small apps where it's a brilliant idea, but they just couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't get out of their perfectionism. It wasn't good enough. It was never good enough. And they just kept on iterating over and over again. And they never took a darn thing to market. That happens more often than you think. Right? Take the engineer. Back to this. The tech guy doesn't get business. Nobody cares that your crap's not perfect. If that were the case, Windows would have never released. Ever. Right? Who here has you know, been through the blue screen of death and then Windows updates and then everything else? Right? <laughs> Who here has a Mac and has the beach ball of death and then just has the beach ball of death updates, right? Same thing, doesn't matter, right? Are those things ever perfect? No, right? So, but you can buy into these things 
at a launching pad and then propel yourself further and get farther along and just and just it gets so so much farther ahead okay so i have seen like brilliant businesses on sale for ten thousand dollars that should well be a hundred thousand right so you can get some crazy good deals doing this if you're an investor and you want to pull this together yourself so where you find these businesses there are giant websites online one of them is called empire flippers and empire flippers is a site that you can just go on and see giant piles of these things right uh, there are some places where you can you can see people who just fell out of love so with example they made a mobile app they got it going they got bored they left i look at this thing they're selling it for five thousand dollars it would cost me twenty thousand dollars to get the code written yeah i'll buy it for five thousand dollars <laughs> Can I make that go faster and better? And, and now, what if we assembled a team? What if we put together a good technologist, a good marketing guy, a good sales guy, a good you know, uh, operations person, and put this together? You could literally make your own franchise with the, with the expansion level and the, and the power level of a, of a startup and be able to merge both of those worlds together. And that's kind of the concept behind this, this structure. So. Yes. All I know is it's a good business, but I know it's really well. Yes. Can I, can I, is there a category that's called paper? And everything to do with the printing industry is. All right, I'll, I'll repeat the question. So I'm a printer. I go to the website. All I know is printing. Is there a printing category? No. However, there will be side by side categories that go alongside printing. So right off the hop, actually, I'll, I'll divulge some secrets. Um, as a printer, you want to work with photographers, correct? Usually, because those are the guys who have stuff to print. Those are the guys who have the intellectual property to make those things happen. But most of the photographers have no idea about the printing side, right? What if you put those two things together? If I was a printer and I was to buy into, say, for example, a photography app, and then those photographers wanted some place to print, I could then create a print network. Here's the hilarious thing: we go to, we go a step, we go a level deeper. I could literally call all my competitors who weren't in my area and offer them leads and then sell them leads from my app. The app would pay for itself in a heartbeat. Does everyone follow? And now I'm a printer who owns a photography app who made all the other printers make money for me. Okay. And that's how you take this idea and take it to fruition. Thank you for the question. That was a good question, by the way. So the funny thing is we've actually identified a good photography app that is for sale that we can go buy okay so this is all real this is all legitimate things that we can actually do literally tomorrow if all, all and all you have to do is think about it for a little while what is it that you like about startups right what technologies are you into what things are in what, what what actual activities are you interested in right then you take a look at the franchises and you look at the systems what do I like about the franchise? What do I like about the system? This is very like a, a Bruce Lee moment where you take whatever you like from everybody else, you put it together, make your own style, stamp it, Bruce Lee, and now you have a new style. Right? And everybody loves you for it. And that's really it. Okay. So this was, this was basically a giant idea party. Right? <laughs> Just throw a cockamamie idea and throw it out to the crowd and see what you guys can do with it. Right? Having the same amount of data, same kind of stuff, the same, looking at the same things, what can you create? How to choose which companies to buy, best practices and where to buy them from. So another, another great company to buy, uh, another good place to buy uh, places from is called Flippa, F-L-I-P-P-A dot com. You go there, there's tons and tons and tons and tons of businesses for sale, right? Some of them are way too much, some of them are way too small, but this, is, this has been, uh, goes back to your business acumen. Can you evaluate what a business is worth? Can you look at something and go, that's way underpriced, let's buy it. Well, these, uh, these sites are directories. Directories. I, I have something I want to sell, I go to flippa.com and I list it. Correct, so to, to repeat, it, these sites are directories. You can go to flippa.com and sell your business if you so chose to. You can go to Empire Flippers and sell your business if you so chose to. And there are people all over the place who would love to buy it up and take it to that next level, right? If you look at, for example, uh, Jimmy Patterson, right? What did he do? 
What does he start with? What did he grow into? All those businesses dovetail into every other business, right? He moved from the car thing to now he has a fishery, now he has a canning company, now he has Save on Foods, right? So he goes, he has everything from fishing to canning to store, which has shelf, which has the, the fish in the can, right? If you have a current business now and you're stagnant and you're looking for ways to grow the business, what if you could just buy a complementary business, take those, dovetail them into each other, and then make that grow? Okay, so the best practice is how to choose which companies to buy. Um, first things first, you know, make sure you're buying it for the reasons of the business, right? Don't buy it because you think it's pretty. Don't buy it because you think the logo is pink and nice. Don't do that, right? Never do that. <laughs> um, buy it because it makes fiscal sense. Buy it because you believe that you can take this thing to that next level and you can add to it with your experience, with your knowledge, with your contacts, with your connections, with your network. Right? You might know enough people that can take this thing and make it go, make it go to the moon. Okay. Next thing, make sure it's still on the trend line. Make sure it's still trending. Right? Today would be a terrible day to get into the fidget spinner business. Right? Just think about that. A year ago, two years ago, those damn things were everywhere. Now where are they? In landfills. Right? <laughs> so they're all gone now. So pick something that you believe has staying power. Think about something that you want to build and, or buy and, and then build up, but it's going to be around for at least two, three, five, maybe 10 years if you, can, if you can find something strong enough, right? Back to the photography example, is photography going to be around in 10 years? Probably. Will people still want hard printed copies of that stuff? Probably, right? So that would be a safe bet, right? If you, you know, found the fidget spinner app and you bought the fidget spinner app and all it does is this, I mean, that's not going to do you any good, right? But then, who, who knows, I could be absolutely wrong. Um, that crazy game called Flappy Bird was literally a one button push game. And all you did is whenever you push the button, the bird would flap higher and higher and higher and we have to dodge obstacles. That thing made $50,000 a day, okay? Because it was excruciatingly hard. They found like the hardest game you could ever play. They made it and then every time you died, they would show you an ad, so you just got angrier, right? <laughs> So you die, like oh, again, and then it shows you an ad, and then you're angry so that you, when you hit there, your blood pressure's up, you start playing again, you die faster, and then it shows you another ad. And yeah, that guy made so much money showing ads, right? We actually offered to buy it off of him. He didn't, he actually took it off of the app store because he thought he was a detriment to society and said, no, people should stop playing this game. <laughs> Hero. Hero, not all people, not all heroes wear capes, okay? Other best practices, when to buy these things. Do you guys have somebody in your network? We were just talking about this with the whole LinkedIn connection thing. Do you have someone in your network that could get distribution for one of these businesses or one of these apps? All you do is you reach out to your network, get a letter of intent. Hey, we're interested in doing this. We're interested in buying this. Do you think you could help promote this thing? Sure we can. Great. Want to buy it with us? Guess what you've just done? You've literally built the startup with a franchise push them together, build the system, and you've made money out of thin air, okay? And that's really it. Like, what do you do? Do you build a startup? Do you build a franchise? You can, you can do all of the above, right? And it doesn't have to be one or the other. You can grab the best of both worlds, smoosh them together, and make stuff go, okay? Here's a message for Envision when you watch this video, okay? Um, I made money from thin air. I made money from thin air. And how I made money from thin air was with a co-working spot, just like this. And what we did was we sold mailboxes. We sold mailboxes. How did we sell the mailboxes? This is terrible, and I know we're recording this, but whatever, it's happening now. Um, I spoke at a woman's business networking event, and I realized that I am not a woman. But they let me on stage for five minutes, and it was the you know, worst and best decision of their lives. I sold mailboxes. And you're like, honey, how do you sell mailboxes at a women's networking event? Well, what I did was this. We are selling mailboxes, so that you can keep your business and your personal life separate and stay private. So this is how, what I did. I went, I went on stage and I went, okay, great, ladies, fantastic. Thank you all for being here. I realize that you're all business owners. Who here is a business owner? Put your hand up. Yay, everyone puts their hand up because it's a business woman networking event. They all better have a business, otherwise why are you here, right? Then I asked the question, who has a website? Yay, everybody has a website. Great, ma'am, what's your website? I typed her website in, Rana Who Is, found her address, looked it up on the internet, ran Google Maps, and said, hey, is this your house? Is this your car? Is that your dog? And then she freaked out on stage. And what if it had been a mean person versus, you know, good old Earl, 
right? That day I sold so many mailboxes. It was crazy. Okay. And that is how you turn something like that. So it was something similar to um, this. This is a startup, right? This, this, this place is a startup that I'm standing in right now. Right? It's not a franchise. There's only one of them, I think, right? And it's beautiful, right? But if they want to be able to grow this kind of thing, you have to think a little bit outside the box. So how do you beat up everybody else? Okay. Another fantastic way to do the exact same thing is we went to the post office and registered a fake floor. I don't know how many floors this building has, but it's a big looking building. I could fake it and say it has five, four, three, whatever. You take the fake floor, you build mailboxes around it, all of a sudden you have legitimate Google addresses. Ta-da, how many do you want to sell? A thousand? Sure, how much? 50 bucks a month? Great, there's $50,000 a month. It's not hard to make money once you understand how. I'll say it again, it's not hard to make money once you understand how, right? <laughs> yeah, once you figure it out. And this is what I'm trying to import on you guys. Well, how do you choose which companies to buy? What are the best practices? How do you look at these things? Right? I'm crazy. I'm the idiot who stands at McDonald's and goes, why would anyone in their right mind buy a McChicken when you can buy a junior chicken for less? The hilarious thing is if you go deeper, you can buy two junior chickens, it's still cheaper than a McChicken, and you get more chicken. Okay? It's all in how you look at things. It's all in how you, how, how you put all these things together. And that's the best practices. Can you see? what other people aren't taking the time to see. Are you taking the time to deep breath, take a look. Can you, can, can you see the opportunity where other people don't see opportunity? And then where to buy from? Okay. So final thoughts, build up, buy in or both. The answer is both. Right? You don't have to stick to one or the other. You can take the unlimited upside from a startup. You can take the strong systems from a franchise and you can marry them both together and use the best of both worlds and take that and use that to grow. Sir, you mean, sir. Take the strong systems. Take the franchise. strong systems from franchise? Certainly. How do, you, how, do you harness <clears throat> how do you harness it? What you do is you find people. You find people who have already done it. So let's pretend that I wanted to start a, um, a networking group, right? And in this room, there are a handful of fantastic super networkers with even more LinkedIn connections than I do, right? And I put that together. That's the equivalent of a franchise. Okay, we, were we were just talking about numbers. So uh, how many people had X number of, uh, X number of followers on LinkedIn? The, the power of a franchise is the ability to, if I color by number and I follow these steps, A, B, C, I will get results, one, two, three. So as an example, let's pretend that I wanted to start a networking system, right? Patrick over here has about 17,000. There's 5,000, 5,000, 6,000, something like that. I have 5,000 myself. We add that together, there's, you know, minus all the crossovers, there's at least 25,000 people in that list, okay? Why do people buy a franchise? Why do people buy the McDonald's? Because they're recognized. I no longer, I no longer need the self-recognition I have the group recognition if we were all to join venture together and make that happen. Okay. So that's what you do when you look at building the building the team, building the system out. You find folks who are already strong at these things and you leverage the team. You 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 work the team and you and you network that piece together. So the first is just building the chapter and then the operation of that all of the franchise. Yes, I'll repeat that. That's that's a fantastic way to put it. A person is equal to a chapter in the operations manual. You're exactly right. So you take someone who's good at marketing, good at sales, good at operations, good at whatever, and you join venture with all these people. And the neat part is this. You've just built yourself a board. And if they've got the financial capability and wherewithal to, you've got yourself an investor list. <laughs> you could all purchase that business together and then take that and make it grow. So this is, this is, one, of those, one of those just crazy ideas I had. You know what? What if we took two things and mooshed them together and let's just see what happens? And essentially the two teams together all get to create the successful um, operators. Correct. So I'll, I'll, I'll repeat that for the for the camera. You're all you're stitching together already successful operators. You're sticking you're, you're stitching together people who have a track record who've already done certain things. That's exactly why you buy a franchise. Right? Yeah, we buy a startup, startup, but not startup. 
And correct, so I'll repeat that too. You're buying into something that already has traction. You're not, and everyone, everyone's not, you know, staring at the same blank page for what the hell do we do with it now. It's you can, concept. correct, it's beyond concept, it's proven, I'll just repeat it. And that's exactly what you're doing. So this is taking a leapfrog effect, right? You're, you're taking that and you're just moving it to that next level. You're taking it and you're, you're, you're building something where something didn't exist before, but you're still using, you're still leveraging the strengths of systems that have long been since proven. Yes. So the question is, how do you account for lack of brand? And the answer is the goodwill of your network. The goodwill of your network. So folks approach me uh, knowing full well that I've raised $20 million on the open market. And I haven't touched that market in over 10 years. I came back to them with a couple ideas. And every single one of them said, yes, Earl will fund it. Now, what's my expertise in raising capital at this point? I'm 10 years old of not doing raising capital, but yet the goodwill of the network is still there, right? And this is where you leverage the experience, the network, the connections, and everything else. This is where you can put all that stuff together. Now, here's the, here's the terrible thing. I'm a marketer, so my, ex, you know, my, my absolute enemy is compliance. Right? So I, I, I want to do wild and crazy things, and compliance keeps saying, no, no, don't do that. Right? So it, it's, it's putting those things together and being able to play with the juxtaposition of those two, those two things together. Right? You know, what happens when the unstoppable, uh, unmovable object gets hit by the un unstoppable force? Well, let's see what happens. Right? Well, let's find out. That's what, that's what you can do. So the online offer is this. We, I, I have assembled a team. And the team is uh, an IT guy who actually had most of the internet startups. And he's built most of the internet technologies that we take for granted today. <laughs> and nobody knows who he is. Okay. So I'm gonna make that guy internet famous. And then I took someone who's really good at compliance, understanding how rules are, are structured and, and, and built and, and, and systems and all that sort of thing. And I threw me into the mix and said, hey, you know, let's, let's market the crap out of this. And what we ended up doing was we built the ultimate startup buying checklist. So if you guys actually want to execute on, and do this, we have a giant list of places where you can go buy businesses from. We have a list of criteria by which you should look for, you know, taking a look at the marketing. What's the competition look like, right? We have all these best practices and all these great things, what to look for when buying a startup. And if you want to take this and actually execute upon it, um, I think you were an M&A, right? So this, this might be useful for you. And, and what, it's what to look for when buying these things. And yeah, the offer for, for this is 20 bucks. So if you're interested in this, uh, I will, I'll, I'll put this on uh, the video and it's just send an email to John, who's my business partner, at the company's called Swifty Startups. So john at swiftystartups.com. Say, Earl sent me, give me the list. And he'll give it to you for this crazy price because uh, that's what we wanted to put together. And uh, the, the offshoot of this is we're not really making any money. I mean, like, we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into making this list. And we actually use this as our operating manual but prior to us going and buying actual real businesses. Uh, what we're looking for is if you are interested and you see this sort of thing, you may want to join our collective and add you know, your expertise to our fold. And I don't know everything. John doesn't know everything, right? But if you join us, then we will know everything all together because eventually we'll be the Borg and we'll decide to you know, take everybody. So it's kind of, that, was the, that was the plan. That was the take over the world plan uh, for $20. All right. So thanks for watching. And that was pretty much the presentation. Uh, any questions or anything? I, I'll take questions at this point. No, we're, we're looking for more people who want to come play. Right, and it's 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 just really we're, hey we we want, we're thinking about buying this way in and give us your give give us your pros give us your cons tell us you know da 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 and that's what we're trying to build that's what we're putting that's what we're putting together all of all of the above we're gonna do we're gonna do a crazy crowdfunding campaign we're going to do so I'm actually gonna go meet up with that guy um, it's funny because his son actually does uh, archery hunting for real. And so I promised him the moment this thing shipped, I would tell him. So I got to tell him that it's here now. 
Um, so that, that's all those little bits and pieces come together, right? So we're looking for all basically all walks of all walks of people who want to come play with us as a group and as a team, and we're just going to go buy stuff and take it to the moon, right? And you know, between us, I mean, we're looking for not just money but smart money, right? Like if you know what you're doing and you go, hey, I, I have experience and, and understanding of this of this nature of this business, then come come play with us on these businesses. More questions? I explained it perfectly. How many, uh, how many businesses have you um, been involved with in the development? Uh, so I've been doing this for a while. So the question, uh, I'll repeat the question, is how many businesses have been doing this with this format? All of them. And so <laughs> I, I, I just finally put pen to paper and just went, how does this all work? And that's where this presentation was born from. And Roger out of the blue asked me, hey, you know what, would you like to speak at VVN? I'm like, yeah, I love speaking at VVN. Like, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. And then someone asked me, hey, how do you build your businesses? How do you structure these things? How do you make them go so fast? And I go, I don't know. <laughs> and then I started looking. And then I tore it apart and ta-da, that was his presentation. So that, that's, that's, that's it. And we've actually identified three businesses that we want to buy into. And that's how come we're putting this thing out there, right? One of them being that thing I was demoing earlier. So was it in part um, kind of a statement of keeping what you've got in your head and documenting it? And definitely. Into a Most definitely. So uh, that, that was part of this painstaking work of putting together that document of when do you buy a business? How do you buy a business? A lot of that stuff was just my gut reaction going, okay, what, what, what statistics, what, uh, how, how will I evaluate whether Earl wants to buy the business? And then John, the technical partner, goes, no, no, no. Okay, there's a whole different set of things that we should look at. This is the technical aspect of when we should buy a business. And then, you know, last, the, the, the finance guy goes, no, no, all that stuff is garbage. We need to know all the numbers of the finance, da, 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 da. And that's how we put together this document, right? We were having this discussion, arguing over how do you buy a business, when should you buy a business, how, you know, all that kind of information. Yeah, that was, that, that, that was a checklist. And so we had a giant hash, you know, hashing out of, hey, this is how we do it. And then what happened was we started to, wait a minute, let, let's go take a step on the other side and see their point of view. Right? If I were a technical person, what would, ma what would make sense to me? Right? The questions change. How old is the code? Right? How often do we have to update this stuff? How many different code bases do we have? Right? Those are the code technical questions. Right? Back when I used to write code, um, I don't know if you guys know, but BlackBerry had 17 plus different code bases that you had to maintain. So if you wanted to have an app on BlackBerry, you had to write that app 17 times. Have fun with that, right? So now uh, it's wonderful. Uh, you know, Apple and Google and everything else have just one great, <laughs> and it makes my life easier. Right? So yeah. So these best practices you're, you're going to see are from different walks of life, different different experts in their field. Like my way in is. Can I sell this thing? Are people still willing to download this thing? Are people willing to you know, make room on their phone to make this thing work out for them, right? Is it pretty enough? Anyone ever download an app and then seven seconds later delete it? Just because it was ugly? Yeah, exactly. So there's, there's a lot of that stuff that I look into, right? Like what's the retention rate? I spend all this money getting the client and getting into acquisition and then they're gonna bail on me in seven seconds. Why? Because it looked ugly, right? Make it pretty, make it nice, make it easy to use. Right, so, and then take into the user experience, right? Um, for example, Patrick in the audience has the biggest hands I've ever seen, right? So if he's touching an app, right? He's got farmer boy hands. If he touches an app, I have to make sure that the collision detection on the app is such that someone with larger hands can actually touch things without touching all the other buttons, right? Have you ever, and, and, and I've done that, I have smaller hands, but I still moosh and push 17 buttons and go, oops, didn't mean to do that. Right? The user experience goes down. What happens when that happens? I get mad, I throw my phone, I, don't, I, don't do, I, I delete the app. Right? You don't want that to happen. So when I'm looking at things, I'm asking user experience, retention rates, um, acquisition costs, how much will it cost me to get people to download the damn thing and then keep it and then not delete it. Right? And then the money guy was all asking about what's cash flow look like? How does this thing, uh, how does it, what's the performance on this thing? What's the cost to build, you know, to get a new client? What's the cost to maintain that client? What's the lifetime value of that client? So that's, that's really it. Like it's just asking and answering questions based around business, but sitting from different points of the table. What we're looking for is people who want to come play with us 
and you know sit in another part of the table and go, hey, you know, I like this app. Let's let's buy this thing. Da 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 da, and then weigh in and come vote with us and come play with us. Right, and that's it. Any other questions? Yes. We're putting it together now. We're assembling the A team right now. Right. So that, that is the plan: is to put these things together, make a community. Let's go buy stuff and have fun. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Roger.